Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two of the Studio Sensei podcast, where we discuss the philosophies and behaviors of success and wellness with creative people. My name is Da Vinci from Studio Sensei, and I'm here today with a really special guest. We've done a ton of live streams. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, that darn replay. At least I know it's working. Um, let me mute that other video really quick. All right, there we go. Um, I'm here with a very special guest who I've had many years of experience uh, live streaming with, as well as um, in live streaming, I guess, because we have been friends for about 17 years, something close to that number, or maybe 18. I don't know. I'm not keeping count anymore. It's been a while. It's been over a decade. Uh, she's... The first Ableton trainer, certified trainer that, that uh, ever were to be certified. She's an incredible performer and a playback engineer to the stars and also runs a few different enterprises, Laura Escuda Enterprises, as well as Electronic Creatives. And overall, uh, generally uh, a, a big advocate for wellness and uh, specifically in the industry that we practice in, which her and I practice in the music industry, particularly in the, the background uh, workings of what's going on as well as the foreground as artists ourselves. Uh, say hello to Laura Escude, everyone. Then I don't have the sound effects guy. Yeah. I don't have the sound effects guy to put like uh applause or anything like that uh, air horn beer, beer, beer. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um as always we we stream the studio sensei podcast live to then be uploaded to well as the all the podcast places afterward um what was that that was weird uh and be the reason why we do that is because we want to make sure that if anyone has any questions, they can type it in the chat on YouTube. And if you have questions, we will try to get to them. Otherwise, I have questions of my own. Uh, Laura, thank you for being on the second episode here. How have you been? I think awesome. I, yeah? Yeah. I just... Um... It's funny that, you know, the, the technical stuff with all these things, there's so many things to think about. And, you know, I was uh, just came off doing my first like Instagram stream via OBS on, on the computer. And it was so awesome. And it's just a while. It's wild times that we're living in here. We're all figuring out new methods of sharing our art and connecting with people and how to just share more i think really just like and keep um the creative juices flowing during this time as well as you know not stress over not being creative as well i, mean, I think that's something that's been coming up for me like during this this covid time like i gotta be productive and do mm. all these things and it's like well but but do i like do i need to like i think that's coming up for a lot of people because we're just really processing what is happening in the world right now um and it's affecting all of us in a different way so but yeah i mean i'm i'm overall i'm awesome i'm just taking it day by day hour by hour minute by minute and just trying to you know just keep my my brain and my thoughts from running away and into the three months from now six months from now a year from now <laughs> all that kind of stuff stay home thoughts yeah. Don't go out <laughs> <laughs> um, Very, could not be truer. Yeah. yeah. Um, for anyone watching, uh, you got to forgive me. I'm, I'm taking notes as we go. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that pops up while I'm talking uh, or while she's talking as well. When my guests are talking that I'm like, oh yeah, uh, definitely want to address that. There's one thing that you just mentioned about, you know, being productive in this time. I saw a tweet the other day that said, uh, this, is a, this is a pandemic 
not a productivity contest or something like that. Um, Laura, uh, uh, thank you, Ruby. Ruby just, just been. It up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Perfect. Thanks, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby. Ruby, new transmutant. Yeah. So, um, one of the uh, that's that's something that like people who are used to you know being in the grind and hustling, we know that when there's time, we fill it up, right? And it's not just about the time that we have. It's about the, the, the expectation of the time that we think other people are having right now too. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on and it prompts us all to want to really take part in, and not let the moment slip away. And I feel like uh, productivity is one of those words that we stand to better understand and use by redefining it. And understanding the larger aspect of what productivity is by knowing that being productive also means being still. Mm -hmm. So I know that this is something that's been a big part of your journey about um, knowing how to, how to hustle healthier to, you know, to, to, to make, to make a, a nod to an article that recently came out. Can you tell us about this article? Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, before I get to that, I just want to say that now is the culmination of all of this practice and um, coaching and all the things that I've done over the past couple of years, especially it's like, okay, now we're going to, we're going to test you, you know, it's, it's how, how, how much have you learned? And, and I'm thankful to have done the, put in the work that I've put in over the last couple of years to become more of who I am because it's, the fear is not as immense as I feel like it may have been, you know, a few years ago before I started to like come home, like literally stay home within myself. So, right. but you know, so to those of you that are watching that, don't know my story. Um, I released an article called Hustle Healthier on Medium about a month and a half ago or so. Um, you can check it out and, and kind of read the whole thing. But the synopsis is um, I had a dark night of the soul about four years ago where I was in the hospital from um, consuming some sort of food or drink after doing crazy amounts of touring and I was exhausted and my body just revolted and shut down. And, uh, I was in the hospital for 21 days and, uh, was very, very sick and had no idea what was going to happen on the other side, but I just knew that I needed to change my life and my lifestyle and the go, 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 do, 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 travel all the time. That kind of lifestyle just wasn't wasn't fulfilling anymore. So, um, my body literally forced me to slow down and yes. it's, it's important for us to, to listen when these kinds of things happen. We have no other choice, right? It's like, well, you're not going to slow down. Well, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to help you slow down. And so at the time it really felt like, why is this happening to me? And that, you know, started to shift into oh thank you for showing me thank you for yeah. showing me um that i need to change my life and that there is something a better way of operating a more holistic more um in tune with myself way to operate and you know i'd always been into spirituality and wellness before that thanks to my mom and she's a, a life coach and she's taught me a lot of amazing tips and tricks but uh life coaching before life coaching was life coaching right exactly exactly it was i mean so thankful for that but at the same time until you go through a situation where you need those tools yourself it's like all you know it's all fine and dandy you're like okay great yeah i hear you i hear you say that i should try these things you know people say you should meditate you know you should do yoga da, da, da. but until you find what works for you and you really get into that place where you need it that's your medicine you know and so 
changing my life um, just slowly through this this circumstance. It became my medicine, literally. Um, particularly thought work. Um, got really into a woman called Byron Katie. Went to a nine day, we'll call it a retreat. It wasn't really a retreat. It was a lot of hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, but about our thoughts and uh, how our thoughts create our emotions and how our emotions create tension in our bodies and create projections on other people and things and cause us to think a year or two in the future. And, you know, I'm being reminded a lot of that work that I did right now when I catch myself thinking, but what, what is going to happen on the other side of this? What, you know, and it's like the lack of control thing, you know, because before I felt like I was constantly needed to be in control of my circumstances in my life and very much um, operated in that way for many years. And now I, I'm just like, ah, I, I have no control, you know, but what I do know is that it's always worked out, you know, it, it, yeah. it always finds a way and just like staying rooted in that for me is, is very important right now, especially in this time. So yeah, anyway, Hustle Healthier, the article, um, talk about touring, all kinds of crazy stuff and uh, different methods and modalities that have helped me to um, become more of who I am. I put a link to the Hustle Healthier Medium oh. article in the, the chat there. And also a link to the Studio Sensei tip jar. Very yeah. important. That's our sponsor. So <laughs> if you um, if you feel so inclined to keep this thing going or, or just donate or whatever, you know, uh, it's there for you. And I'll make sure to split it with uh, with our with our guests today. Uh, so one thing that is crucial to this talk is the goal is is like I said, it's discussing the philosophy and behaviors of success and wellness with creative people. But I'm very interested in furthering the talk of what success is. Mm. Uh, Wellness, we kind of have a pretty unified definition that we can agree upon on that. But success, not so much. Uh And I find that in this age of comparison that we that we constantly train that skill of comparison through social media and, and just, you know, we've always done it. But now we just have many more ways to do it, to Mm. train that muscle. It's become very strong, and I think it's important to understand that success is a very personal definition, and I like to have guests on this podcast that are, in my opinion, successful, and I like to discuss those things to normalize and empathize with people that you would think are successful, to understand all that goes into being successful in your own way. it's not too far off from what many people do day to day. And I like the idea of revealing that and demystifying that for people because we all go through things. We all have times when the world has knocked us on our ass and told us to listen or slow down. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I have always been on a very parallel path. I've had that very thing happen to me in a very painful way. Uh, It wasn't quite sickness, but it was very, very painful, (laughs) like physically painful. Um, It was, it was uh, like, it manifested as, as gout and kidney stones, you know, Uh, definitely knocked me on my butt and told me to listen, slow down. Uh, I wanted to explore some of those things with you, but first I wanted to discuss why I chose you to be on the show besides the fact that I love you and, Aww. you know, we, we're always doing stuff. <laughs> Specifically, uh, I like to go through a, a bunch of questions at, and these questions will evolve over time, but I have like a core set of questions that I want to a- ask every guest of the show yeah. and just kind of c- compare qu- uh, answers uh, and see how, how similar and, and where the overlap is for, for, for all the different people. So first thing is not quite a question, but here's why I think you're successful. I think you're successful because you are level with the adversity you face, meaning you have things in your life that would normally hold people back. 
you have things that you've encountered that you deal with in real time. And it, at the same time as dealing with those things, you're still managing at least one empire, maybe a few, right? And being active. And when you found out that that wasn't a sustainable thing to do, you invested in yourself. You doubled down and you kept investing in yourself when things got harder, Mm -hmm. even if that meant spending money on help, you know, or spending time on you or spending money on you, you've, you've invested in yourself a lot and it's proven to be helpful because from the outside looking in, you have many of the successes, a lot of people in this field would want right and i'd say it like that because from the outside looking in is one view and we all know what that looks like from the inside you know people can tell us all the time oh you're killing it you're doing great yeah you know and and from our point of view we'll be like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like we're we 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 ta- are taught to react with the reflex of how we're not really achieving and all the things that we're out trying to outrun yeah. and it's and we're not getting to enjoy the success that everyone else gets to see because really all of that success is a byproduct of us outrunning our own fears and what we want to yeah. avoid but through all of that and i've seen a very up close and personal uh perspective of this journey you've evolved to continue doing your thing, continue, quote unquote, killing it, as well as continue to take care of yourself better and better, right? And that is exactly why I think you're successful. You know, I could talk about all the things on paper that are successful, but to me, the nucleus of your success exists there. And without any of the other things going on, it's very commendable and... Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so I'm honored. I mean, thank you so much for it. It's it's always nice to hear, you know, a close friend, someone like yourself, say those kinds of things because we're so close to it. Yeah. We're so in. I feel like I'm so in it all the time. I'm in my head. I'm like scrambling to make all this stuff happen and, and like to to zoom out like that. You know, it's like wow. Okay, that's a that's another perspective, you know, that is another perspective to have. And I think it is important to, for us to zoom out and have other people remind us, you know, where we've come from and what we've done and, you know, especially close friends and, and people in our industry. So I really, absolutely. I like, you know, with studio sensei and you, you know, because you're familiar with what I do uh, on the holistic side of creative wellness, as well as just wellness period. You know, um, uh, I like to be training wheels for people. So when I give you a compliment or when I show you what I see, it's not necessarily just a compliment. It's not anything but just literally telling you exactly what I see with no frills Mm. so that you can practice seeing it yourself, right? Mm. Encouragement training wheels, you know? self-love training wheels (laughs) because it's because I know more than anyone or just as much as anyone rather how hard it is to be on the outside of the bottle that is us and read our own label yeah know what we taste like know where we should be marketed you know or where it would be in our best interest to be marketed and uh nowhere on the shelf we fit you know uh or even what what it looks like from your point of view And I think it's really important as a practice for everyone to do that for everyone. Uh, It's, it's super useful and we are each other's mirrors might as well reflect often. So I told you why I think you're successful. Can you tell me without, um, (laughs) uh, can you tell me why you think you're successful? Uh, well, I think the investing in myself part 
that really hit home actually. Um, and it, and it kind of made me realize, gosh, how much <laughs> I've invested, <laughs> but, and, you know, time and energy and financially all of that. Um, I really felt like before I started investing as much, um, I was, you know, I was struggling, you know, I was struggling to, to find who I was. I mean, it was, I, okay. I rephrase that. I was like at a different place in my life, you know, and I was finding my way as we all are at every moment. Um, but it's really been, yeah, the investments in the past couple of years with like coaching and mindset and, um, just different, different training. And every single time I thought, I couldn't, I, I, I can't afford this, you know, and I, and I swapped the word invest, you know, I, I used to say, oh, that's expensive or that's going to cost this or, um, I, I paid for that or just like language like that. And, um, I just started becoming aware of that and I was like, wow, okay. I, I truly feel like this is, not going to work out. You know, I, I had those thoughts like, but if I invest in this and then on the other side, like what if I'm broke and what if I don't have any time and what if this or what if that, but like, I've just really followed my intuition. And even when there's that fear, as we talked about before, that fear that comes up when we try something new, even when that has come into my life in making these big decisions, I did it anyway. And I think that's a big, big part of it for me because I used to be, yeah, I used to be really fearful, you know, and now I'm, I'm not like, it, it, I realize I'm just aware now of how that has shifted for me. There's something you said earlier. I'm trying to remember what it was, but, um, yeah, it's just a, a mindset really it's the, it's the mindset shift mostly um and also leadership you know um communication like i've stepped into my leadership before i was kind of hiding you know i was like i don't want to i don't want to lead cuz it's scary cuz what if the world doesn't think that i'm you know doing it right or saying the right things or know everything and it, we all put pressure on ourselves in our own little ways and um so I really just let that fall away you know and um and to just communicate with my team and the people around me and to just lead as best I can through some of the most challenging decisions that recently I've had to make and throughout the years. And it seems like every day there's a new tough decision when you're a leader or not a leader. Um, but when you are leading a team and you've got people that are counting on you and depending on you, you have to make decisions, not just for yourself, but for, for everyone else. And, and also remember that ultimately I am number one, you know, I have to, yeah. that's, have to put on our own, you know, mask. Before. It's the evolution of care. Uh, it's the, it's the scene in a beautiful mind where he's talking about, no, it's not, he had it wrong. It's not just about doing what's best for oneself. It's doing what's best for oneself and the group. If you follow selfishness far enough, you find that empathy is, a, is along the path. You know, it's not something that's just about you. It's about you and and you can't completely take care of yourself with also without also considering others as well. But it's got to come in order of you first, and then then everything else external. Um, you you mentioned something that is uh, key, and it reminds me of another thing that I think is a successful behavior that you take part in. And I don't even know if you really are fully aware of it. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> uh, no. Um, basically, I think that there's a lot of ways 
as people, we've gotten really good individually at talking ourselves out of doing things. Mm, yeah. And I think a key behavior to success and wellness, but definitely on the success side is doing anyway, right? Yeah. Acting first, putting the things in motion and then figuring it out as you go. That is definitely something that I know is true among all the successful people I know. And the, I think a difference between your behavior and many people is simply the order in which you do things. Mm. Um, I've seen you be in a role and completely feel like not equipped for it. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> but you're there and you're dealing with the thoughts of self-questioning which you know i don't think is very useful but is still common you know um that many people deal with you're just dealing with it after the fact that you're there mm -hmm. and i think that reversing of order is crucial to getting things done because if you do it the other way around, you may have a failure to launch. You may never even move, right? But I see you moving and then figuring it out. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why um, necessarily, just that opportunities present themselves and I go for it. You know, I just... I always have, and now I'm getting better at just stepping into those roles. And, and, you know, you have to try something out before you know if you want to actually be in that role or not. And I figured out a lot of stuff that I don't want to do. You know, I've, I've figured out a lot of things that I don't necessarily care for, or maybe I'm not the best at, it just doesn't light me up. And I've, especially in the last couple of years, I've been doing a lot of work around joy and what truly brings me joy and um yeah i think it's important to just to lean into that and to become more aware like now when i do things i'm like okay does am i enjoying this you know i just asked myself a couple minutes ago and i was like am i enjoying this and i was like yes this is like i love situations like this talking with friends like going deep sharing with the world answering questions sharing knowledge it's just like all in my dna you know and um there's other things in the past especially in the past year that i've had to do that i have not enjoyed and i was very aware of it and um but i still did them anyway and i and i came out on the other side and and a lot of it just has to do with you know leadership and finding the right people like I've heard the right butts and seats or the right people on your bus finding the right people on your bus you know because before I tried to do everything and then I was like oh I'm, I'm not finding this joyful <laughs> and I'm not the best at this so should I be doing this no I shouldn't and so I've been doing a lot of work around trying to find the right people and connect with the right people. And, um, and that's been integral to my, my growth, I think as a leader, especially over the past couple of years. I think a lot of people try to figure these things out virtually, like in a simulated space, which is yeah. our head. Our heads are simulated realities. Right. And, uh, some would argue that this is a simulated reality too, but that's not this podcast. That's a different one. Um, <laughs> but let's, let's argue the fact that there's an actual reality, a shared one at least, and a simulated one. And I think a lot of people try to figure things out through simulation first. And that's not how you figure a lot of things out. That's how you just stay still in, in a stagnant way. And, um, yeah, I, I see you figuring things out in real time. And um, which which leads me to my next question. Uh, what do you what do you do when you encounter a hurdle? 
<laughs> oh man. Well, I talk to people, you know, talk to people like you, close friends, my family, um, people that know me the best. Uh, I mean, especially if it's like a big, if it's a big hurdle, if it's a smaller one, I'll just sit quiet and ask myself, okay, what do I need to do here? I mean, my intuition, it's been, it's easier to access from doing the work and the meditation and the things I've done over the past couple of years. So that just, just comes up and I just listen to it, you know, and then it's never wrong. <laughs> That's the it thing. never is. <laughs> and anyone who's taken part in any studio sensei <laughs> sessions or has yeah. heard me speak ever, I'm always talking about how your intuitive voice is the most trustworthy thing on the planet. It's never wrong. We might, stand to be better at interpreting it right but it, it is never wrong and uh what a great thing to to lean on <laughs> that there's something infallible in our lives um you kind of answered this already you know uh, i usually ask what are some hardships that you faced but more specifically what was a what was a key turning point for you and i think you address that in the Hustle Healthier um, uh, article, as well as in the beginning of this podcast. Mm. But um, can you think of something? I mean, I say a key turning point because there's many, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that, would you say that that's the biggest one that you can think of? Four years ago. Um, there's been a few, you know. I would say usually are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I would say like Saturn returns when I was 27. Oh, the Saturn returns. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have a friend who's going through that right now. For those of you who don't know Saturn returns and you might be able to explain this better than me, but it's basically a time in your life between like 27, 28 and 31, 32, where you're just like, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like the things that you've kind of been tolerating up to this point in your life. Um, you're just like, uh, -uh. or you, it, it's a key turning point. It's a key crossroad and mm -hmm. you could, you could go one way or another. Yeah. And if you go the way that you're being urged to, you're going in a way where you're embracing what you really want. You're listening to your intuition more fully. Yeah. Uh, did, did I kind of nail that or I is it? Okay. I I mean, it's, it, it was like my first dark night of the soul, really. Uh, well, the first big one that I encountered and um, life, the universe, whatever you want to call it was like, you got to pay attention. This is not, this is not the path. And um, I was in a bad relationship and the, the house that I was living in, uh, unbeknownst to me it had toxic mold in it and we were trying to break up and we just kept you know we were living there and our lease wasn't up and da, 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 all this stuff and literally this mold came from nowhere <laughs> seemingly from nowhere <laughs> and i got really sick and i got to move out because of the the mold early <laughs> You got to move out because of the mold. That's a funny yeah. sentence. Because, I, I mean, in retrospect, you're probably like, yeah, that was probably more than just the mold. But <laughs> oh, yeah, but it was like, okay, this is not this is not the right situation. And around the same time, so a few months later, after that, I got laid off from Ableton. I was working at Ableton, and I tell this story, you know, from time to time, and. So I just, I was got, I was really sick for a while, had this breakup, which was really challenging. That was like a big love in my life. And then got laid off <laughs> all in the course of a couple of months. And I was like, what am I going to do? You know, at this, at this time, I remember like teaching Ableton lessons and like taking the cash and like going and getting a cashier's check with it and then going and depositing it into my bank account to make rent, you know, the next day or whatever. 
stuff like that. Like I was really down to the wire and I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, I, I didn't know. I mean, unemployment only lasted so far. So that was a, that was a challenging, challenging situation. And I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I just lost my dream job. I mean, I became a certified trainer, but at the same time, I, that didn't really pay at that moment. Later on it did, but, um, but you know, the company said, Hey, you know, we're restructuring. It was 2008 and the economy tanked and our last recession. Right. And then all of a sudden I got this call from Cirque du Soleil and they said, do you want to come to Vegas and work on this show? And from then on, I just started working on all these shows and, and doing more and getting more and more opportunities because all of a sudden I was like in this different phase of my life. And, um, if those circumstances hadn't happened the way that they did, then I, I wouldn't have been open to taking a job like that or going on tour with Kanye or doing any of the things that I've done. So it was, it was a, definitely a catalyst for me to become an entrepreneur because I had always worked at companies, you know, from when I, I'd, I've been working since I was 13, first of all, just doing, working at different places. But then since I graduated from college, I mean, I worked at, at a school, I was teaching, I worked at a tax consulting firm, my first job out of college, I worked at, you know, a music tech company, I worked at Ableton, I did all these things. And then it was like, well, no companies are hiring right now. What am I going to do? You know, no one's hiring the economy's, you know, tanked. I, I need to create my own company. And that's really literally how my, the first iteration of electronic creatives was born, uh, in a company called Evo Tech Audio, where I started becoming a rep for various different companies. And I just was connecting with, instead of having one big job, I had a lot of little jobs. I was like, okay, I'm just going to see if these companies want to hire me. Slash warrior. <laughs> you know, like just five hours a week, you know, whatever it was. So that's kind of how I started piecing things back together. And then, you know, on the other side, I just became an entrepreneur unwittingly. And I've, and you know, I've <laughs> resisted a lot against it because with being an entrepreneur and leadership comes a lot of challenges. So much resistance. <laughs> so much. <laughs> but I don't want to be in charge. Yeah. It's been really funny because like you, you resist it, but um, you've been, you, but you're still doing it. Like, and I, I never took that. I would have advised you to completely get out of it. If I didn't, if I wasn't convinced, you know, as a friend, I would have said like just stop this because it's clear that you don't but it was also clear to me that you did want to do it it was just like the way you were doing it you didn't want to do it that way no. you know it was just not not a sustainable way of going about it um and, and every phase it's like okay um how, how do i want this to look great how do i want to feel i mean that's the main thing because i feel like before it was more about how does this look and what is the money like? And, you know, what is the, what are the accolades like? And, you know, yeah. patting me on the back for doing this. And now it's like, what does this feel like? And I really mm -hmm. had to get back in touch with what it feels like because I felt I was so disconnected from like my heart and, and my feelings because I put that aside to go do these tours and work with other people and cater to their dreams and what they wanted and it was amazing and I got to tour the world and it was I wouldn't trade it for anything but then at a certain point it was like well what do I want to feel who am I what what is my voice you know and I felt like that's what the situation four years ago was like it was like my voice like trying to come out like who am I who is Laura like who yeah yeah if you could tell your younger self the uh, something on the eve of that dark night of the soul mm. you know if you had like maybe 10 minutes to discuss with them 
you don't have to take 10, 10 minutes right now, but what <laughs> idea would you want to get across to them to help get your former self through that period in a more thriving way? You know, you got through it, obviously, but yeah. what were some things if you had to do it again, you might have uh, lessened for yourself or give yourself a lesson to like enjoy that process a little bit more? Mm hmm. Uh, I remember being in the hospital and my mom flying out and um, I remember being very like angry, you know, I was, I was angry that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I couldn't live my life. I felt like it was happening to me, you know, I felt mm -hmm. like, I felt like a victim, you know, I felt like... Yeah a victim of the circumstance. I felt, um, out of control. I felt, I just, I was, I was trying to look at it as an opportunity. I really was because I knew part of me in the back of my mind was like, this is an opportunity, but I wasn't there yet. Right. <laughs> you didn't have the, you didn't have the practice extracting that from. Oh. In no, I didn't have the practice and it took me, a while it took me several months to see it as an opportunity and part of that had to do with just not feeling well you know and when you don't feel well it's easy to <laughs> very low bandwidth less <laughs> less less space to process yeah yeah and so yeah i would tell her to to realize that this is an opportunity for growth and for change and to not resist it. Yeah. So, um, hey kid, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance. And, you know, and now, I mean, I don't know if we, we could, well, we could probably talk about now a lot, <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but it's the same thing, you know, but it's yeah. lessened, you know, like, yeah. especially the, the last month, there's been a lot of adversity, with everyone. I mean, there's challenges. Everyone's challenged right now. No one is immune to this. Um, there's, it's a lot of just struggle everywhere. And I, and I, from time to time have almost gone down that path, you know, like, why do I have to be the one to dot, 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 you know, why do I have to be the one yeah. to figure all of this stuff out and lead and make decisions and these decisions are hard these are hard decisions that affect people like how, how did my life get to be where i have to make these decisions that affect people but at the same time i just realized that that's that's part of it you know and it's and it's leading with love and i try to do that as much as possible to make the right decisions um with the tools that we have and the, the circumstances that we have and to know that this time is really an opportunity for us. Oh, and totally. Huge opportunity. And I think just that, that awareness um, and just as much as one can just keep in that energy right now, um, because I feel like people are revealing who they really are right now you know, and instead of putting a mask on, you know, the masks are coming off a bit, you know, I've seen like pictures of celebrities in their pajamas with no makeup and like, you know, we're all just here being more raw and real and vulnerable than we ever have, even though we're not physically able to be in the, in each other's space, but we're connected in this way more so than ever. I mean, we're all, we know where to find everyone. We're all yeah. fine. <laughs> it's, all it's here. such an interesting time. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's more than interesting. You know, it's a crucial time. I encourage everyone to stay home. You know, I have friends who, who have uh, relatives and things who are, who are catching COVID-19 and things like that. And it's a very real thing. I don't care if you believe in any conspiracy theory or not. It doesn't matter where it came from. It's here. Let's deal with it. And let's deal with it in a way that is looking out for not just our own interests, but everyone's best interests, because that's our own interest, too. Um, but 
since we are in this space and we uh, do find ourselves with ourselves and not so much with others, right, in a physical way, yes, this is a fantastic opportunity while we're here to check in in a way that we haven't been able to do or haven't been afforded to do or even thought that we could do before because we're not in the same race or, or day-to-day lifestyle that we've built up around us. And a lot of the, un, you know, to, to use some of the political words or hype words going around right now, all the non-essential is not allowed right now. <laughs> and uh, we're getting to focus greatly on the essential and what's more essential than what our intuitive voice is telling us and what we hear when we're still and what we hear when we're not having to deal with external things so much. And uh, fan- uh, it's crazy. And, and, to, and it's not just crazy like on a personal level. It's crazy the fact that the whole world is in that space right now. Right. Wow. That is nuts. That is nuts. And we also have this technology to do what we're doing, still connecting with people. It's, it's nuts. We, we could talk forever on that. It's crazy. But out of respect for time, I do want to move on to the next question, which is awesome because you already, you know, you're like, it's, 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 like these are in the you're proving to me that these are in the perfect order because like you're you're like leading right into the next thing um you discussed (laughs) how you were motivated before right versus how you're motivated now and um some of what i extracted from what you said is you were a lot more motivated by appearances and by external things and now you're a lot more internally motivated um so if you can expound on that or just answer this, what was your fuel before and Mm -hmm. what sustainable fuel have you traded it for? Mm, Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's all the same answer really. And, you know, my fuel before was external acceptance, love, you know, like always looking for that kind of next hit of someone to tell me, you're amazing. You're, you're doing great. Or, you know, as a perfectionist and someone working with artists at at a very high level and craving that, um, you know, that respect and that adulation from other people, I think I just, if I didn't get it, or if like I pulled off a show and people didn't notice, or, you know, it would just kind of crush me. Oh, I think you're muted. Um, <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, it would it would just ruin your night, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. And, or if similarly, if someone had criticism for me, you know, I, it would just crush me, you know, because I was just so just focused on getting that from other people, and now I just focus on getting that love from within myself. You know, and it's lessened tremendously. I mean, I still obviously care about what other people think. I I care about friends and family and loved ones. But there's a lot of noise out there and there's a lot of... It's exhausting to try to cater to every single person out there and um, to get... It's the icing, not the cake. Yeah, like you're, you're definitely more fueled by the internal first. And, you know, it's cool. Like, I, th- I think people listening, um, it's completely cool to want all those things, to want external acceptance, but to be, like, internally motivated and that to be your main fuel, it's just not sustainable. Um, and when external acceptance comes in the form of an afterthought after you give it to yourself, it can be processed healthily. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Good, good swap there. <laughs> it's gonna. Lie. I think that's like uh, something we. I, I've definitely gone through as well. You get caught up in in how things look rather than how things feel. Yeah. Um. So. You'd say that. 
joy is what motivates you now, mostly. Is that right? Absolutely. What, um, what do you want externally now? Now that you've put things in the right order of joy first, mm-hmm. you can then address the external goals. What are some of your external goals right now? To use my voice more in the sense of inspiring and leading and also singing (laughs) in all aspects huh yeah in all aspects to use to use my voice to inspire and uplift and create opportunities um yeah that's i love that to express myself more as well just to right highest form of self-expression that i can have being Um, vocal that's a good one being vocal yeah for years you know i felt like i was not able to speak up and i think a lot of people will probably resonate with this but you know we're taught or we learn from our families or people around us society whatever to hold that those voices in those thoughts those comments you know and some people they're it's very easy for them to just say what's on their mind you know right and And some people use that as a way to deal with the same insustainable fuels that are driving them you know it takes all kinds like some people use that practice of being very vocal in in a way that's not necessarily sustainable too yeah but yeah that's a good that's a good one that's a great answer um how long does something stay in your head like you get the impulse to do something (laughs) you know you get ideas Mm -hmm. typically how long does it stay there before you start moving Mm, like two minutes like a minute (laughs) see See, that's funny because a lot of people don't realize like that's really it. That's really it. And, and I think I'd, I'd love to know the origin story of that skill because that's a skill. Everything's a skill. That skill because um, I think it's not something we've talked about a lot. And, you know, but it's, it's absolutely key to your, to your things you know one of the things that uh <laughs> always happens and I'm, I'm one to like mull things over a little longer i i'm very skilled in the headspace area uh and i i also try to practice you know what i call mental fluidity or mind body fluidity and but historically i've been a very in the head person and um i'll see you like put something out and it'll be like you know, we're always on the same page so much. And it's just funny because like you do it so quick. Right. And I love that. And it's inspiring because like, I'll have an idea and then I'll see it on your timeline, you know, beautiful. (laughs) And it's just like, it's a great reminder, like impulse to action like that, learn from your martial arts reflex, boom, like that. And I don't even know, like if I, like, because we've never really talked about, it, I don't even know if it's something that you, that you attribute to most of the things that you could say that you have is your, your quickness, your mind, body fluidity. The impulse to action is a straight line. You know, you don't hold things in your head. And I wonder, I wonder why that is, but uh, you know, at the same time, like that, that is a superpower. I hope you know. Oh, thanks. I guess I, <laughs> I don't even think about it. I mean, I uh, how fitting, and that's <laughs> you know, I mean, like that's that's exactly my point. You yeah. know, um, one of the one, I mean, it's a byproduct of my work. I'm always trying to create maps of where I've been and and how to make tangible the intangible ideas, and uh, so I spend a lot of time in that space. Um, but I find that people are that are movers are movers because they're moving more. Right. And I think that that's, that's a fantastic superpower that you have. And I just wanted to point that out um, and ask about that. That's actually one of my usual questions. How long does something stay in your head? Uh, But I think for you, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty apropos. 
Um, I mean, there's plenty of stuff that doesn't happen. I mean, you should see my like ideas document. Oh yeah, but that's different. The idea queue is <laughs> look, we we get ideas thousands of times in a that's year. Perfect. You know, like we have queues of things we're going to execute. But also, I think a, an important thing to have, in addition to a responsiveness to an impulse, is patience for an idea, responsiveness to an impulse, patience for an idea. Because when you have patience for an idea, you can let it, sometimes some ideas that we have are for two years from now and they just pop up now because write it down, that's it. You know, so I think that's a different thing and knowing the difference is key. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting how full circle things come like ideas that I've had a long time ago that I fleshed out and wrote out all these things. And then I kind of forget about it or other things are a priority. And then they kind of come back and then it's like, Oh wow. I already wrote, wrote all this stuff down. I already know what this is. Now I'm ready for this. And it'll just kind of like see back. And that's the exciting part I think is to just ideate and like, come up with the concepts, put them away, see if they float back. Yeah. They usually, they usually, I, I know when they're ready, when they like overlap with other ideas that are right now, you know, and that's been happening a lot for me lately. And it's, it's been rewarding my patience in a lot of ways. And I'm super thankful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, which brings me to my next question. Um, what's your relationship with time? Hmm. That's an interesting question. <laughs> it's kind of open-ended. Uh, I could, I could, I could focus it a little bit more. There's another part to it. You want both parts? Yeah, maybe the other. Yeah, ask me the other part. Okay. Do you do you often feel behind, and what's your relationship with time? Mm. Oh, that's a. I like the way that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was a rapper. In <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't look that up. <laughs> um, I don't think I feel behind anymore. You know, I think I, I did. I always felt like I was playing catch up or I wasn't getting enough done, accomplishing enough, doing enough, creating enough, all of that. I just felt like I wasn't enough, really. And that's all shifted um, because now I just know that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be. When I, when I get that feeling of like, oh, I, I don't want to do this or this isn't in line with who I am or my vision, I just just notice and I realize that this is this is part of my who I am right now this is happening you know stop trying to fight it um and just accept it so a lot of acceptance but the more I've invested in myself with all the aforementioned things that I've done um the more that I've become more comfortable with just the what I've accomplished at this point and who I am right now and you know sometimes I'll I will catch myself like oh you're not this enough or you're not that enough and can you be better at this but then I realize that our own self-awareness sometimes um, I, I realize that that's just my thoughts about myself and that's not actually <laughs> who I am because I'll take a step back and then realize okay well like in all of these situations that I didn't think that I could pull off and there are many you know from doing huge shows to speaking in front of big audiences to you know whatever it's been i've thought beforehand i'm gonna i don't know if i can do this why are they asking me i'm you know the whole imposter syndrome thing and then i pull it off and it and it happens and maybe it wasn't as good as i would have liked but I made it out alive. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like the, the worst thing that you were simulating in your head didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, the, the third worst thing that you were simulating in your head didn't happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, so here's, here's two questions in a, in our, in our little quick little lightning round, just 
mainly because they're kind of review for what you already mentioned. Uh, if you could say in one sentence or one word, what motivates you? Connection. What's your compass? Passion. What do you look for in others? Compassion. Nice. All right. So I think um, one. I think one last question. If there's no other ones in the. Uh, I'm really proud of myself. This is like a proper hour. You know, you and I always I go. Know. <laughs> I, I, I was sort of like, I have another Zoom call in 20 minutes. Am I going to have to text them and let them know that we should push it, or because <laughs> you and I, I mean, we literally could talk for hours. But... Yeah, we have and we will. Uh, <laughs> but today we're kind of on time because yeah. we are Zoom pushers, aren't we? Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> let me let me make it longer. I like. I'm... <laughs> What do people get wrong about positivity? Mm. Um, I think there's like this, like think positive thing, you know, like you get told think positive and everything will be better or do this or do that. And um, when you're in it, it's really challenging to just, think positive right so um i just now try to breathe and get more in my body and stretch and try different movements or things to help me feel um help me feel better and and it does it's i think it's about not necessarily thinking positive but overcoming um, some of those thoughts that create those feelings in a way that is not like it's not like you telling yourself something that you don't believe you know because it's it's hard to jump from like man I am really down on myself about this thing to like I love myself I'm great da, da, da. and and, and that a lot of this like the pe so many people just try to switch that you know, and it's like, it's okay not to feel okay, you know? And yeah. It's important, you know, for all of us to understand that it's okay not to feel okay. It doesn't, it obviously <laughs> doesn't feel good. Um, but trying to stretch to, to think something that does is not authentic to you in that moment is not, that doesn't feel good either. So I think for me, I just try to like take one step in the direction of, a, a new thought instead of think positive like yeah one, absolutely one step in the direction of shifting that that thought or that mindset absolutely fantastic answer i couldn't agree more <laughs> it actually um it bugs me <laughs> when when people are like yeah i'm just trying to i'm just trying to be positive it's like why right. you know you're not like focus on what's productive, not what's positive. And, you know, like you said, one step is, is, is certainly productive. Um, what do you have coming up? What do you got going on? Uh, this is, this is the time that you can tell the people about what's, what's going on for you, right. both in a personal and professional place. Uh, you don't have to discuss your personal stuff, obviously, <laughs> but whatever you want to tell people about what's coming up. Stuff is a lot of um, staying at home. <laughs> <laughs> right for, for the unforeseeable future absolutely Staying at home uh, a lot of not being in control of what the next however many months or years or the rest of my lifetime is going to be like um and a lot of just like online efforts again just like everyone else but um yeah it's 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 really cool because i created my transmute program uh, about a year and a half ago for live performers to work with me online to level up their live performances and to transform the way that they perform. And I've been leveling up 
transmute as we go along and the transmute accelerator and incorporating more mindset work and more holistic modalities and it's just been morphing into this like more all-encompassing like artist development program and so I'm really excited about it uh, because it's literally like every the culmination of all of the work that I've done and the people that I've worked with over the last couple of years and the joy and the inspiration along with the music and the technology and all the things that I love about expressing myself through performing and wrapping it up into this program and so um that's starts in may may 4th and we've got already got a great group of people from all around the world that are joining us so um yeah really excited about that we are accepting applications still so um if anyone's interested definitely check out the transmuteaccelerator.com and then apart from that, um, just making music and working on my live stream setup and nerding out and um, meditating and just uh, going within and staying healthy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I put links to lauraescude.com in the chat here as well as uh, transmuteaccelerator.com and your upcoming intensive, the creative business intensive that's yes. happening on for uh, the April 20th as well uh, for four days. And uh, I'll provide, provide links for that there. Uh, and anyone that and goes, that comes to transmute is actually going to be in CBI as well. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, oh, wait, uh, Jenny, Jenny just had a question, 11th hour question here. Oh, can right. You, well, we, yeah, you, we just talked about that. It's so funny that all of a sudden, like the sun, you know, is coming in. It's like, yeah. Right. I'm going to look like a ghost in a minute. Um, yeah, it's a creative business intensive. It is for creatives who want to learn how to put together their creative business online and it's going to have like a lot of the methodologies that i've used over the past couple of years about finding your why and living in your joy mindset work sales training marketing branding um, so it's a little bit of of everything to put together the whole package of what you want to offer to the world and to just tie that up in a nice little bow. So that's going to be, as you said, um, the week after next, March 20th. There's information about that on my site. And yeah, it, people that are coming to transmute get that um, as an extra bonus. So um, it's pretty cool. It's going to be a fun time. Lots of learning going on. Yeah, she she asked um, if you can come if you're not a programmer. Oh, oh yeah. So so CBI is just for anyone. It's it's not. Um, there's no genre or certain uh, career path that you have to be on. It's really just anyone who's a creative that wants to help build out the next their their dreams for the next phase of their their career. Um, using the tools and techniques and things that I've learned over the past couple of years. And I've got a couple of amazing speakers, including Da Vinci coming and like mentors of mine that I love that have really made a, a big impact on me are coming to CBI to, to teach. So it's going to be a really awesome experience. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, <laughs> he's like, quick I, on the mute. My trackpad, my trackpad battery just ran out. Oh. So, <laughs> so um, I'm like reaching. I forgot, and I'm reaching over here to unmute. Um, so you know, because I didn't want to interrupt you with all my my reaffirmatives, like, mm, 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 <laughs> you know, um, I'm still learning how to be a great podcast host or even a good one. So. Like, honestly, um, well, I'm also starting a podcast. Not exactly. There you go. Just, you know, of course, no, of course you are. 
because we always do the similar thing. Yes. Mine, not actually going to be like a, a podcast podcast, but it's going to be a live video thing. And, and I was taking note of how you did the introduction. I'm like, oh, yeah. His <laughs> Work on that. That's good. That's good. I didn't. I didn't work on it. This is the second episode. Oh, but like you just the tagline, you know, like everything's like it. it yeah, it, it feels good. I love. You know, that. I talk a lot, so I have a lot of practice speaking. So, um, <laughs> so uh, and not in a bad way. Like I, I feel, I feel like I talk the right amount, or else I wouldn't be doing it. But um, yeah, you actually are really good about letting me speak and letting the, the other person speak because i've definitely done certain interviews where it's like uh i need to get a word in edgewise <laughs> i can't stand listening to those those bug the heck out of me the person starts talking then it's like yeah yeah totally blah, 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 you know and it's just like they're they're vocal and mine probably is too <laughs> their vocals always louder than the other person's. It's just like badgering them, you know, with audio. And I'm just like, nope. That's even why I why I muted. I was like, well, I have to make some effort to speak here, so I'm gonna make sure when I speak, it's in the. I'm gonna read the room oh. here and listen more. Yeah, I, <laughs> I appreciated that. Thank you. Yeah, I just gotta get charged on my my uh, my trackpad <laughs> here. Uh, <laughs> I want to say a few things before we head out. Yeah. And um, I want to thank everyone for listening, both on the uh, replays of this and the people listening and watching live. Uh, I wanted to also mention that studiosensei.com is a great place to find out more about the upcoming podcast, as well as a bunch of other things that we got going on. The flagship service that we offer at studiosensei.com is one-on-one -on -one sessions with me called studio sensei sessions um and in those i teach what i call the sustainable practice method the sustainable practice method is a framework that i've been developing pretty much my whole life uh, that draws from a lot of things that already work and just really makes a tangible pragmatic practice out of the things that seem to elude us or might be a little bit more intangible in our lives. And I'm doing a lot of it for creatives. Uh, that's where I, where I center a lot of my focus, but at the same time, I've talked to people of all walks of life. If you go to studiosensei.com and click on the learn tab, we recently revamped everything at the site. So the, you'll see a section for all the workshops coming up. We have free workshops coming up uh, in the next few days, as well as every week we're trying to provide more free content, especially in this time where uh, we're all not sure what's going to be happening next and we're all at home. So if you go there now, you can see that I'll be doing a live studio session, interactive studio session tomorrow night. Uh, it's called In the Process with Da Vinci, where basically I'm going to be just in my creative process and you guys can interact with me while I am. That's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern. I just made the flyer, so don't get on my back if I got that wrong. But uh, I also have another one coming up with our friend who I met through you, uh, Shiva. Um, uh, on Monday, I'm actually have we we were set to catch up, and I said like, well, let's do this thing together too. Uh, I started another interactive workshop series called How to Practice, and um, if any of you are familiar with my work, I say that everything is a skill, and all time doing anything, you're practicing something. So uh, I really like to focus this series on how to practice, how to tangibly practice seemingly intangible skills you know and uh this first episode of it or first workshop first iteration of it is uh how to practice worrying less yeah. you know so i think that's uh very apropos for what's going on right now you know there's a lot of stuff that we feel justified in worrying about right now but i'd like to argue that it's not about worrying and more so about being careful mindful and What's the word? Uh, vigilant. Yes. And those are very different from worry. Maybe even the same result, but better, but a lot less wear on you. So we'll be discussing that on at 5 p.m. Eastern on Monday. If you go to studiosensei.com slash workshop, you can 
register for those for free. I also have heavily discounted the one-on-one -on -one sessions in this time to make it more um, accessible for everyone. And there's still a free version of these, these sessions up as well. And I also, of course, have a course coming up. It's called Creative Warrior. It's also for anybody, not necessarily just creatives uh, in one particular field, but it's for people who um, want to want help getting out of their way to create every day. And whatever you create, that's fine. It's it's a uh, uh, thank you, Ruby. Thank you very much. She put the the correct time and everything. And yeah, I was right. 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night for, for that workshop. Um, so yes, Creative Warrior, I'm accepting signups for that. We're going to be running during Mental Health Awareness Month. And it's a 30-day um, interactive workshop and or interactive course and creative challenge. And it's going to be a lot of fun as well as very transformative for people, uh, including myself. I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, it's been a culmination of a lot of things coming together. And I think it's the perfect time for us all to, to consider something. I'll also be offering some of that for free too. Uh, the first week, in fact, will be free. So you can take part in that too. So head on over to studiosensei.com. If you would like to support and don't know how, there's a few ways to do that, studiosensei.com slash tip jar or tips, you know, either of those work. You could donate and I will, any donations I got from this, I will split with our awesome guests here. But also if you just want to support in some other way that doesn't require money, by all means, like, share, and all the subscription things that you could do, those things help immensely. I want to thank my guest, Laura Escude immensely as well, uh, to use the word again in such a short interval, um, <laughs> for being a guest on the Studio Sensei podcast and for being a great friend. And uh, I love you. And Aww. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for having me. This is incredible. And everyone that's listening, whether it's in real time or after the fact, should definitely check out da vinci's workshops and courses who's i take them as well you know, <laughs> never stop learning from each other and he's yeah. got good gems not yeah. just production but just life and mastery so. it's about the whole right we got to address the whole or else we one one's not sustainable unless you just address all of it Back. all right <laughs> so Look at us, 77 minutes, a new record. I will talk to you soon and uh, lots of love to everyone. Have a good one and enjoy your practices. Peace. <laughs>